This is Irene Woods. We're now ready to begin working on the sleeves. And again, I'm picking up from the bottom of the yoke. In the back, and this is where the seam is that joins to the back, and the front, which is over here. And I'm working on the size 3X. According to the pattern, we should be picking up 50 stitches. Now, I know the chart says 52. The reason that it does is we're going to pick up 50 stitches and then immediately increase one stitch on each edge. And that will give us a total of 52 stitches. You've seen me pick up stitches from waist yarn before, so I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll be back. I have the sleeve back on the machine at this point. I can't get my camera back far enough to show you the whole sleeve. So I'm going to keep it set here where at least you'll be able to see what I'm doing on the right side. I'm just simply going to knit the sleeve downwards from the yoke. This is, this is the yoke right here. I have already put in six rows of short row shaping on the left side of the bed. And I'm going to do that now on this side. This will be a mirror image of what I've already got on the left. I've already made the increase on this side. So now what I'm going to do is return the first six stitches to work position. I could probably get away with just simply pushing them back. But I have a little bit better luck keeping everything where it's supposed to be by putting this first step manually back into the needles. First short row step. Set the row counter for zero because actually what we're going to do is work on the raglan seam at the same time as we're short rowing this little wedge. So these rows do count as part of the seam length for the raglan. Wrap the first holding stitch and knit back. Make an increase. Six more back. I'm only taking these back about halfway on the bed. Back to position C, get one row, wrap, and knit back. Make an increase. Six back. Okay, and that's the end of the short rows. So now I need to set the carriage with both Brussels levers forward because from here on we want to knit all the stitches across the row. So now continue making the raglan increases. Make the increases.
And I'm going to continue that until I have a total of nine increases. And then we'll be casting on for the base of the armhole. So I'm going to work until I get to the armhole, and then I'll be back. I've now reached the base of the armhole, and I need to cast on. I'm actually using the first draft of this pattern. I picked it up by mistake when I first began knitting the back, and so my stitch count is off two compared to the pattern that you will be using if you are working on the size 3X. But I decided to continue with it because I didn't feel like redoing the back. So instead of casting on 11, which is what your pattern calls for, I'm going to cast on 12 on each side. And again, when I have to cast on so many stitches, it's easier for me to take the yarn out of the carriage, do the E-wraps, and then put it back in the carriage. And what I'm going to do on the left side is identical. So I'm not going to show you on camera. I'll be back when I'm there. From here on, it's going to be fairly similar to the way we did the back except that I will be decreasing from the armhole to the wrist. I'm going to pull the end needles forward. It's really hard to get the weights on until you have a row or two of fabric. So for the first two rows, I'm going to pull these needles. We now have enough to get the weights in. So I'm going to put them on the end stitches. I need to return the row counter. I forgot to do that. It should read two at this point. I need to decrease one stitch both sides every five rows 13 times. So this is two rows. Make the decreases. I'm using the two prong tool. Okay, I don't think you really need to watch me knit the entire sleeve. What I'm going to do is continue decreasing every fifth row until I have 13 decreases, and then every sixth row five times. And then I'll knit even to row count 100. At that point, I'll take it off on waist yarn but I'm going to knit down to the waist yarn, row count 100, and then I'll be back. I have knitted the entire length of the sleeve, removed it on waist yarn, and I've now rehung it on the stitches for the cuff. I'm going to knit a total of 18 rows.
I'm on tension five, which is two full numbers tighter than the main tension. And this is just about as tight as I can get this machine to knit woolies. It's very, very firm fabric at this point, and I am having to put quite a bit of pressure on the carriage to move it. We now have 18 rows. I'm going to turn the tension dial all the way up to 9 as far as it will go. I need one loose row for the bind off. We're going to do the ribbing just exactly the way we did on the back. I'm dropping every other stitch and latching back up as a knit stitch. I've already done two columns, the first two columns, and then this is the third one. I've raveled it down to the waist yarn. Now begin latching up. If you can master this method, your ribbing will go several times quicker. In fact, I'm having a bit of trouble even slowing down enough that you can really see what I'm doing. Pull down firmly with your left hand to keep that ribbing ladder open. And then basically it's just in and out, in and out. I have finished relatching the entire cuff and now I'm taking it off, pulling stitch through stitch all the way across. Now we're going to pull off the waist yarn. Give everything a sharp tug. And there's our ribbing. Now it does have a lot of stretch. It looks quite small. And when you sew it up, it's going to look like it won't fit. But it really does. It's got a lot of stretch, got a lot of give. I like knitting the cuffs at two tensions tighter than main tension whenever the yarn will possibly tolerate it. Because that way if I want to push my sleeves up, and sometimes I do, to about a three-quarter length, then this usually will have enough stretch to hold it there. <laughs> 